anyone who's spent a lot of time around kids knows they can be very mean to each other. As a clinical psychologist, I've heard so many cases of terrible bullying. I've seen adult clients brought to tears by memories of the ridicule they faced as children or teens about their appearance or their sexual orientation or for no reason at all, just because they were there. I've seen kids who are afraid to go to school because they know that they're going to get shoved or tripped in the hallway or their classmates are mocking them and even telling them to kill themselves or somebody shared a naked picture of them with everybody in the school. Then there are parents who feel furious that their child is being abused by other kids, but also helpless to stop it. Schools around the world have tried to stamp out bullying by encouraging kids to be upstanders who call out cruelty rather than bystanders who tolerate it. These efforts are important, but an unintended consequence of anti-bullying programs is that the B word is sometimes thrown around too casually. Kids see bullying everywhere, and that makes them less equipped to deal with real relationships. What's far more common than bullying is just ordinary meanness. Deborah Pepler and her colleagues at York University did a study where they had teachers identify children in first through sixth grade who were either especially aggressive or especially non-aggressive. Then the researchers secret, secretly recorded the kids on the playground. What they found is that those especially aggressive kids did some form of mean behavior every two minutes but those carefully selected non-aggressive kids, they did some form of mean behavior on average every three minutes. So it doesn't make sense to focus on protecting the good kids from the bad bullies. It's a lot more complicated than that. Researchers actually have a very specific definition of bullying. It involves deliberate aggressive acts targeting a specific person usually repeatedly over time, although sometimes just one especially horrible act can count. And this is important. It involves a power difference between the person doing the bullying and the person being targeted. In other words, the kid doing the bullying is bigger, stronger, tougher, or more socially powerful than the kid who is being bullied. Or it's a group of kids picking on one kid. This power difference is what makes it difficult or impossible for kids who are bullied to handle it on their own. A lot of what kids call bullying is really just ordinary meanness because there's no power difference. Two friends might be very mad at each other and say very hurtful things and feel very hurt and upset, but it's not bullying because one friend isn't more powerful than the other. It's just a conflict. I want to be very clear about something. I am not advocating or defending or excusing bullying or any form of meanness. But when we fail to distinguish between ordinary meanness and bullying, we trivialize those very serious cases of peer abuse. We should not be responding the same way to the minor incidents as we do to the very serious ones. Two kids arguing heatedly on the playground about who was first in line for the slide is not the same as a kid getting beaten up or a group of kids creating a website about how much they hate a particular classmate. When we distinguish between ordinary meanness and real bullying, we actually empower kids to build better relationships. I worked with a girl once who was very upset because her friend was sitting with someone else on the bus. She was convinced that she was being bullied because she was excluded. So she decided to write a long letter listing every mean thing the friend had ever done. And then she gave the letter to the friend. 
The friend promptly accused her of bullying. It wasn't bullying on either side. Neither girl was more powerful. It was just a clumsy effort to handle a conflict. Just because a child is upset doesn't mean it's bullying. Hearing you're out, yes you are, in a game of kickball might be very upsetting to a child who doesn't believe he's out. But it's probably not bullying. It's something he needs to be able to handle. We can comfort him, we can help him learn coping strategies, but we don't wanna label those other kids bullies because that doesn't help this child learn to deal with frustration or handle conflict. We, we have to understand this difference between ordinary meanness and bullying. As parents, when we hear that um, someone is mean to our child, our instinct is often to leap in to protect. If it's a case of true bullying, where the child is really powerless, it might be helpful for adults to intervene. But if there's no power difference, we don't want to tell kids you've been bullied because that's the same as telling them you're a victim, you're fragile, you can't handle it if anyone is even slightly mean to you. Children are very quick to label other kids bullies if they do something they don't like, but they're not so good at recognizing when they've done something less than kind. I had a client once, a middle school boy who came in and told me I was bullied today. When I asked what happens, happened, he said, this kid, he told me, quit making those annoying noises. No, that wasn't bullying. It was a reasonable request because he was doing something annoying. School-aged children definitely know the difference between right and wrong. If you ask them, is it okay to call someone mean names or is it kind to hit someone? They know the answer is no. But kids who know better and are usually kind can sometimes behave in casually cruel ways due to what I call empathy blind spots. Empathy blind spots happen when kids decide that certain people's feelings don't count. And so they feel justified in being mean to those people. They tell themselves he's annoying or she's weird or nobody likes them. Believing these excuses, they decide that their mean behavior is acceptable, unavoidable, or even righteous. Stephen Asher and his colleagues did a study, an observational study of kids in third through sixth grade and they found a cringeworthy list of 32 different ways that kids reject each other. This included everything from hitting and kicking to lengthy arguments along the lines of, no, uh, uh huh. Some of the forms of rejection were very blatant, things like refusing to let someone sit at a lunch table or telling somebody, you can't be in our club. Others were less clear. So teasing could be friendly or mean-spirited. Refusing an offer of food could mean just not liking that food or being concerned about cooties. Even children who consider themselves best friends are sometimes mean to each other. Preschool and early elementary school children average just under three conflicts an hour. Getting along with other people is difficult. Your child is definitely going to face ordinary meanness. And your child is probably going to do mean things sometimes. Impulsivity, immaturity, following the crowd, or just experimenting with social power are all things that could lead kids to behave in mean ways. But ordinary meanness is actually an opportunity for kids to learn about relationships and it paves the way for more caring communities. I once had a client, a six-year-old boy who came in and he was so sad. He told me, I lost my best friend today. The situation was rough. 
There was a big argument with yelling and name calling and threats not to be invited to a birthday party. Rubber mulch was thrown. Fortunately, no one was hurt. But that afternoon with me, he was so sad because he was convinced the friendship was over forever. I told him, I don't think you lost your friend. Here's what I want you to do. When you go into school tomorrow and you see your friend, give him a big smile and say hi, and then just play with him. He said, really? And I said, really? We adults tend to want to talk everything out, but research tells us that negotiation and compromising doesn't become the main way that kids deal with conflict until age 19. Before that, mostly kids just separate for a while for tempers to cool, and then they come together again and just be kind. Bullying is a serious problem that requires intervention from adults. The power difference is what makes it difficult or impossible for kids to deal it on their own. But we know that that ordinary meanness is going to happen. When, not if, kids make a mistake and they do something that's an act of ordinary meanness, we don't wanna just label them bullies because that's an, a dead end. Instead, we wanna help them to calm themselves down because a lot of mean behavior happens when people are upset. We can also help them gain empathy and understand the impact of their actions on other people. But mostly we wanna help them move forward in a good way, maybe by offering an apology or making amends or creating a plan to avoid the problem in the future. And when kids are the target of meanness, of course we want to comfort them. But we might also need to help them recognize their contribution to the problem, or maybe to speak up in ways that they're going to be heard. Or maybe they need to learn to forgive and move on, or to choose kinder friends. Ordinary meanness is common. It's difficult and upsetting, but also manageable. It's something that kids need to learn how to handle with support and guidance from caring adults. And it's something they need to learn to avoid doing themselves. We adults haven't managed world peace or even perfect marriages. So it's unrealistic to think that kids will always be perfectly kind to each other but kindness is a worthy goal. Thank you.